Hello and welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and in this video I'm going to show you a super easy way to use gradient mesh to create a defocused background. If you've ever wanted to try gradient mesh but don't know where to begin, this is a good place. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is go up to the file menu to place to place a photo on your artboard. I have this photo from Photodune and you can link it, that's fine, you don't have to embed it. Just click OK and then click once on the artboard. You can use a really small photo as I have here and that's part of the beauty of this tip. And I'll just enlarge it to fill the artboard. The next thing you do is go up to the object menu to create gradient mesh. In the dialog that pops up, add as many rows and columns as you like, but not too many. Here I've made it proportional to the length and the height of my photo and each section is roughly a square. You can check the preview if you want to see what it looks like beforehand and you want to set the appearance to flat. When you click OK, you're pretty much done. But we want to make some adjustments to this because it's a little blocky because it's a square grid. So I'm going to take my direct selection tool and just move some of these points down so that I don't have those pronounced square edges. Now it's hard to see what you're doing because you have the grid laid over top of the image. So here's a trick. You can go up to the window menu and open the navigator. You want to make it as big as you can in your window and here you get a nice big preview of the image without seeing the grid of paths and points on top of it. So any adjustment you make to the mesh will be reflected in the navigator. You can move entire sections of the mesh by clicking in the space between the lines and I'm just going to continue making some slight adjustments again so I don't get those blocky sections. Since it's defocused and abstract, you don't really have to be that precise. So now I have more of a rounded hedge in the background rather than those square shapes. I've got some work to do over here on the left and rather than move some points, I can simply recolor them. So I'm going to take my eyedropper tool and with this point selected, I'm going to sample the blue next to it. And you can see that updated on the navigator. Here's a dark spot and I'll sample some blue that's next to it to get rid of that. Again, you can see that updated on the navigator. This point is a little too dark, so I'm going to sample a lighter green that's close by. And now you can see that that's a much smoother transition. My clouds are a little stair-steppy, so I'll do the same. I'll hold down the Command key or the Control key on Windows, select the point I want to change, then release the Command key and sample the blue next to it. I can move some of these sections and continue to sample colors, making that line a little smoother. So now that looks more like some defocused, abstract, fluffy clouds and not so much of a stair step. So here's my final piece and if I view it in outline mode, you can see that I've done only minimal manipulation of the mesh. Some of the transitions have been achieved through sampling adjacent colors. So you really don't have to be an expert at gradient mesh to achieve this effect. You can use it as a defocused backdrop for other illustrations or as a background on which to overlay type. And since it's gradient mesh, it's 100% vector and it will scale to any size without loss of quality.